Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Miss K, back with another amazing thing for us to do today. So, for today, you're going to need a scarf. Boop, boop, boop. My scarf looks just like this. Now, at home, you may be thinking, Miss K, I don't have a scarf like yours, and that's okay because you can use anything like a pillowcase or a small towel or if you have a small blankie or if you have maybe a t-shirt, you can use that as your scarf. Now for today, we're going to start with our scarves on the ground and we are going to learn all about a piece of music called Dance Macabre and it is written by a man named Camille Sasson and it kind of looks like it says Macarabe the way it's spelled, but it's actually pronounced Macabre because it's from France. Right? Now this piece of music, you're probably looking at the board below and you're like, Miss K, there's lots of pictures. That because, that's because this piece of music helps tell a story. Now if we look at these pictures, they have something in common. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my goodness, they all have something to do with Halloween. How cool is that? They all have something to do with Halloween. And when I'm looking at this, I see that even some of my pictures repeat. I see two bats. I see two cats with pumpkins. I see two ghosts. And I see two witches. And that is because all of those symbols, we have a movement that goes with it. And we're going to do that movement two times whenever it comes up in our music. Now, like I said, today you're going to need a scarf. And the story of Dance Macabre tells us a little bit of a tale about some trick-or-treaters on Halloween. So our first section, our introduction, we're gonna pretend to be the trick-or-treaters and we're kind of scared because it's spooky on Halloween. So we're tiptoeing, right? We're tiptoeing around, just like this. And oh my goodness, we tiptoe and we find our candy bag on the ground. So we're gonna slowly pick up our candy bag and we are gonna be ready to go, just like this. Then we see our pumpkin. That's our next move that we see. So when we see our pumpkin, with the music, we're gonna take our scarf and we're gonna go up in the air and back down, and then back up and back down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Oh my goodness, and our ups and downs are gonna get faster as we go. So you're gonna follow me. So you remember, anytime you see that pumpkin, you're gonna go up and down. Then we have a bat. Oh my goodness, and we're gonna take our scarf and we're gonna pretend it's a bat. And our bat's gonna fly around, because guess what? We're out trick-or-treating and we see some bats flying around in the sky because it's Halloween. So our bats are gonna fly around, just like this, right? If you wanna move in a circle while your bat flies around, we just wanna make sure our bat is flying around. Good job. Now we have a ghost, and we know that when we see ghosts, they fly in the air, so we're gonna take our scarf and we're gonna draw the number eight, but we're gonna draw that number eight on its side. We call that a figure eight, and our ghost is just gonna fly through the air. Good job. Excellent. And then we have a witch. That's our next movement that we need to learn. Now, when our witch is flying on its broom, sometimes it flies high in the air. Sometimes it flies low to the ground. Sometimes it flies high to the air, sometimes low to the ground, high to the air, low to the ground, high to the air, low to the ground. And you're gonna know which direction our witch is flying on her broom by listening to the music because when you hear a high pitch or a high sound, your, your witch is gonna fly high in the air. When you hear a low pitch or a low sound, your witch is gonna fly down to the ground, okay? now. We have one more movement that you probably noticed, which is the haunted house. <gasps> That's because we've arrived at our destination for trick-or-treating, which is the house. We're gonna take our scarf and we're gonna go up and down. And our trick-or-treaters, we get a little scared because the house is a little spooky. So we're gonna throw our candy back up in the air and we're gonna hide at the end of the piece. Let's just try that part really quick at the end. So we go up. We go down and we get scared and we hide. Oh my goodness. Let's just review really quick what each movement means and then we're gonna practice, okay? So we have the trick-or-treaters, our scarf is on the ground. We're tiptoeing because we're scared. We're tiptoeing, right? We're tiptoeing, 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 tiptoeing. And I picked up my candy bag. I'm ready to go. I'm 
ready to go trick or treating. I'm so excited. I go up in the air and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. That's my pumpkin. Then I see some bats while I'm walking around trick or treating, and my bat's gonna fly in the air just like this. They may fly in a circle too. Awesome, right? Then I see a ghost flying around. So I make that figure eight that we talked about, which is the eight laying on its side. It flies around. Good job. Then I have a witch, right? And sometimes my witch flies high in the air and sometimes it flies low to the ground and high in the air and low to the ground. Good job. And the last thing we see is a haunted house where our, our scarf goes up, down, and we get scared and we hide. 